गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू जी के टूडे आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेरी वेल एंड टूडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यूज फॉर एट्थ ऑफ मार्च ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर लेट स्टार्ट विद आवर सेशन दस्ट क्वेश्चन इज डेज ऑब्जर्व एज अ नेशनल सेफ्टी डे इन इंडिया सो इट इज ऑब्जर्व एनुअली ऑन फोर्थ ऑफ मार्च इन इंडिया and it marks the beginning of the national safety week basically this day emphasizes safety and precautions in all the sectors and what is the theme for this year theme is safety for a sustainable future okay so this theme highlights the vital connection between the safety measures and sustainability also this day serves as a reminder of the critical importance of prioritizing safety extending its focus beyond a single day to promote long term safety practices right so two things are important when do we observe the national safety day answer is 4th of march and what is the theme for this year theme is safety for a sustainable future next is rupa tarakas silver filigree which has recently received a gi tag belongs to which indian state so it belong to katak in the state of odisha and recently it has secured the gi tag from the gi registry in chennai city so odisha state cooperative handicraft corporation limited submitted the application which was supported by the department of textile and handicrafts and this filigree is linked to acquisite craftsmanship in classical jewelry which dates back to 3500 bce in mesopotamia historical evidence suggest its introduction to katak from persia through indonesia around 500 years ago via the sea trade okay simply we have to remember that rupa tarakas have got the gi tag and it belongs to odisha okay next is recently which ministry hosted the first blue talks meeting on the ocean in new delhi this is ministry of earth sciences and they have hosted the first blue box meeting on 29th of february in new delhi and this meeting was co-partnered by the embassy of france and embassy of the costa rica in india so the ambassador of france to india and the ambassador of costa rica were co-conveners of this general assembly and this meeting focuses on ocean health and governance and the ministry of earth sciences took a significant step towards fostering the international collaboration and ocean related issues right so the first blue talks meeting were hosted by ministry of earth sciences where in new delhi fine recently who has received the maharashtra bhushan award 2024 in recognition of his contributions to the field of regenerative medicine here answer is dr pradeep mahajan and who is he he is the founder and cmd of stem rx and recently he received the maharashtra bhushan award for his ground breaking contributions to regenerative medicine also his unique approach and commitment have advanced scientific understanding and provided innovative therapies globally so his work at stem rx hospital and research center has not only transformed the patient treatments but also it has established him as a beacon in regenerative medicine earning him the prestigious recognition for his impactful and pioneering effort right so this year dr pradeep mahajan has received the maharashtra bhushan award 2024 next is recently larsen and tubro commissioned its first indigenously manufactured electrolyzer at which particular place so in the month of march larsen and tubro commissioned its first indigenously manufactured electrolyzer at the green hydrogen plant at am naik heavy engineering complex in hazira in the state of gujarat so the electrolyzer is developed and assembled in india and conforms to international standard as well and larsen and tubro plans to use its giga scale facility in hazira to meet the growing demand for the green hydrogen also they plan to maximize the product localization through enhanced local supply chain and automation for cost competitiveness fine so larsen and tubro commissioned its first 
indigenously manufactured electrolyzer at Hazira in the state of Gujarat. Also recently, Maharashtra was in news. Why? Because the custom official seized a dual-use shipment that was suspected for Pakistan's nuclear program at Nava Sheva port east of Mumbai in Maharashtra. It is also known as Jawaharlal Nehru port and it is India's busiest port, right? It handles half of the nation's trade and it was commissioned in the year 1989 to ease Mumbai's congestion and now it boasts five terminals for containerized cargo and handles the bulk liquid cargo. So the port's entry channel spans 21 kilometers with a depth of 10.1 to 11 meters, right? You can be asked that Nava Sheva port that was recently seen in the news is located in which Indian state? So it lies in Maharashtra, okay? Next is, what is the name of the mobile application recently launched by Minority Affairs Minister Smriti Irani for the Hajj pilgrims. So Union Minister Smriti Irani has launched the Hajj Suvidha application. Basic aim is to enhance the pilgrimage experience by offering crucial information and services. So it was developed under her guidance by the BSAG-N and it is a kind of user-friendly application and it streamlines travel logistic provides access to the training modules, flight details, accommodation, emergency helpline and health services. Also, she introduced the Hajj Guide 2024 in different 10 languages and it underscores the application's importance for all the pilgrims, which promotes a seamless and informed journey. Particularly, it is beneficial for the first time Hajj performers, right? So the name of this mobile application is Hajj Suvidha application that has been launched for the welfare or for the facilitation of Hajj pilgrims, okay? Next is, first ever made in India AST DS tug Ocean Grace is recently built by which manufacturer company under Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways promoting the Atmanirbhar Bharat? Who is our Minister for Ports, Shipping and Waterways? This is Sarbanan Sonowal and recently he virtually inaugurated this Ocean Grace which was developed by Cochin Shipyards Limited and Ocean Grace is India's first ASTDS tug. Okay? So it aligns with PM Modi's Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative. Answer is A option, Cochin Shipyard. Next question is, recently which country became the first country to include the right to abortion in its constitution? So France has made history by becoming the first nation to embed the right to abortion in its constitution and in a landmark joint parliamentary session a resounding majority of 780 votes supported this constitutional amendment while only 72 opposed it so this historic decision adds explicit language to article number 34 of the french constitution that guarantees women's freedom to choose abortion within the legal framework and it marks a significant milestone in reproductive rights, right? So France became the very first country to include the right to abortion in its constitution. Also, Union Minister Sri Jyotir Aditya Sindhya inaugurated India's very first green hydrogen plant at Jindal Stainless Limited in Hisar in the state of Haryana, okay? So this is a global first in the stainless steel sector and uh, this off-grid facility incorporates rooftop and floating solar tech. Basic aim is to cut the carbon emissions by 2700 metric tons annually and 54,000 tons in over two decades. So this project marks a milestone in sustainable industry practices which showcases India's commitment to green energy and environmental sustainability. Fine. You can be asked that recently, India's first green hydrogen plant in the stainless steel sector has been inaugurated in which Indian state? Your answer would be Haryana. Next is, B. Sai Praneet, who recently announced his retirement, is associated with which sport? So recently, he announced his retirement from international badminton on social media and he is from Telangana. And he cited the injuries since the 2020 Tokyo Olympics as a reason for his retirement. So he plans to become a coach in the US. And in the year 2019, he won a bronze medal at the World Championships 
becoming the first Indian to do so since 1983. Also, he won the Singapore Open and competed in the Tokyo Olympics as well, right? So, B. Sai Pranath has recently announced his retirement and he is a badminton player. Who has been appointed as the new Chief Secretary of Bihar? Here answer is Mr. Brajesh Mehrotra and Bihar government has appointed him as the new Chief Secretary. He is a senior IS officer. Also, he is the additional Chief Secretary of Revenue and Land Reforms currently and his distinguished career includes the roles in general administration and parliamentary affairs which showcases his dedication and competence in the public service right so who is the new chief secretary of bihar answer is mr brajesh mehrotra also iit madras is hosting the all india research scholars summit 2024 from march 4th to march 7th and it was organized by the research affairs council Basically, this event brings together the minds from diverse disciplines across India to showcase and explore the latest research advancement and focus is on fostering the collaboration between academia and industry. Basically, this summit aligns with the Atmanirbhar Bharat's vision which promotes the self-reliance through innovation, right? You can be asked that recently which institution has hosted the All India Research Scholars Summit 2024? Answer is IIT Madras. Recently, National Workshop on Logistic Efficiency Enhancement has been jointly organized by the DPIIT and WIT organization. So, Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade and the World Bank Group organized the National Workshop on Logistic Efficiency Enhancement in New Delhi. And this workshop brought together the logistics sector community to brainstorm. And uh, talking about DPIIT, it works under Ministry of Commerce and industry right here correct answer is world bank headquarter of world bank lies in washington dc headquarter of imf also lies in washington dc headquarters of wto lies in geneva switzerland and you have to tell me where does the headquarters of unicef lie recently who became the first woman sniper of the border security force this is suman kumari and sub inspector suman kumari is the first woman sniper in the border security force and recently she completed an eight week sniper course at the central school of weapons and tactics that lies in indore and she achieved instructor grade so her journey to become a sniper began when she was commanding a platoon in punjab and saw the threat of cross-border sniper attacks so she volunteered for the sniper course and with this she became the sole female among 56 male counterparts fine so suman kumari recently became the first woman sniper of the border security force and this is an extremely important question next is recently where was the asian river rafting championship organized here answer is shimla who is the current chief minister of himachal pradesh mr sukhwinder singh sukhu and he inaugurated the asian river rafting championship near basantpur on satlaj river near the ditch shimla and this event hosts 20 teams from the nations including Nepal, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, Iran, Iraq, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan and Indonesia. Okay. So there it emphasized the government's commitment to promote adventure tourism and it highlighted a recent river rafting marathon in Nadao Hamirpur district also as a part of this initiative. Right. So. The what was the venue for the Asian River Rafting Championship? Answer is Shimla, Himachal Pradesh. Also recently, Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has introduced Mukhya Mantri Yuva Udyami Vikas Abhiyan. Why? To back the young entrepreneurs. And this initiative offers interest-free loans up to 5 lakh rupees, which would support the digital transaction and provide the grants to encourage the adoption of digital payment method. So government aims to nurture 1 lakh young entrepreneurs annually through this program, which would foster the economic growth and innovation in this state, right? You can be asked that which state government has launched an initiative to support the young entrepreneurs called M Yuva scheme. Your answer would be Uttar Pradesh. Okay. Next is where was the India's first National Dolphin Research Center inaugurated. So India's first National Dolphin Research Center was inaugurated by Bihar Chief Minister 
नीतीश कुमार एंड दिस सेंटर इज लोकेटेड नियर द गंगा रिवर ऑन द पटना यूनिवर्सिटी कैंपस सो दिस इज अ सेंटर ऑफ एक्सेलेंस that will help the researchers and the students to understand the ecosystem of rivers and researchers at the center will focus on different aspects of dolphin behavior in their natural habitat including the study of food habits and their adaptation to the changing environment so this center will also play an important role in training the fishermen on different methods to avoid harming dolphins during the fishing activities right So India's very first National Dolphin Research Center has been inaugurated in Patna in the state of Bihar. Now apart from it, our Defence Minister Rajnath Singh is set to inaugurate two piers and seven towers which would provide 320 homes for navy officers and the defence civilians at the naval base in the state of Karnataka under project Seabird. Okay? It is the largest naval infrastructure project in India. and it was conceived in the early 1980s then it was sanctioned in the year 1985 and this project spans nearly 11000 acres which features a deep sea harbor breakwaters and a township along with a naval hospital so once completed it will be the largest naval base in the eastern hemisphere where it would accommodate different warships submarines and the aircraft right you can be asked that project seabird which is india's largest naval infrastructure project is located in which indian state your answer would be karnataka state right next question is riza textile which has recently received a gi tag belongs to which indian state so this is tripura's traditional tribal attire and uh, recently it has been granted the gi tag this is a kind of hand woven cloth and it serves as a female upper garment okay not only as a female upper garment but also it is used as headgear stole and a gesture of respect so it holds social and religious significance and the young girls receive their first riza at the riza sor mani ceremony which is uh, used creatively and this cultural symbol is integral to the attire of tripura 19 indigenous tribal communities right so riza textile has recently got the gi tag and it is a product from tripura state now apart from it india's prime minister narendra modi has inaugurated the core loading process of the prototype fast breeder reactor where at madras atomic power station in kalpakkam tamil nadu fine so this is a nuclear machine that generates more fuel than it consumes and uh, it utilizes the uranium plutonium mixed oxide fuel along with thorium 232 for transmutation and liquid sodium serves as a coolant which facilitates electricity production and with advanced safety features this indigenously designed reactor marks a significant achievement that involves 200 plus indian industries including the msmes right you can be simply ask that where did the prime minister of india witness the initiation of the core loading process for the indigenous prototype fast breeder reactor your answer is kalpakkam in the state of tamil nadu fine next question is extremely important what is the rank of india in the world bank's women business and the law index so india's rank is 113 out of total 190 countries and this index examines the legal environment for the women's economic opportunities in across different eight categories including the mobility workplace and entrepreneurship okay basically the score ranges from 0 to 100 with 100 representing the equal rights and uh, this report provides objective benchmarks for the global progress towards the gender equality and it highlights the achievements and it underscores the need for further efforts so as to ensure the economic empowerment of all okay so india's rank in the world bank's women business and the law index is 113 out of 190 countries you can be also asked that which organization releases the women business and law index your answer is world bank okay headquarter of world bank lies in washington dc next is recently which ministry launched the digital intelligence platform and chakshu facility on sanchar sathi portal this is ministry of communication and recently it unveiled the digital intelligence platform and chakshu on the sanchar sathi portal 
basically dip facilitates the real time intelligence sharing and coordination among the stakeholders like telecom service providers law enforcement agencies banks social media platforms etc and it is developed by the department of telecommunication and uh, it is a kind of secure platform which is inaccessible to the citizens also the portal highlights the cases of telecom resource misuse right so ministry of communication is associated with digital intelligence platform and chakshu facility on sanchar sathi portal now these days ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution is also in news why because this ministry has recently unveiled the e kisan upaj nidhi initiative in new delhi okay who is our minister for it mr piyush goel and basic aim is to make the agriculture sector the cornerstone of viksit bharat by the end of 2047 so this is a digital gateway which was developed by the warehousing development and regulatory authority and it streamlines the farmers warehousing logistic through technology and it ensures the fair practices for the produce also the minister announced a reduction in security deposit charges at these warehouses from 3% to 1% okay so it obviously encourages more farmers uh, particularly small scale ones so as to utilize the facilities and boost their income right you can be asked that e gisan upaj nidhi that was recently seen in the news is launched by which ministry your answer is ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution right next is which days observed as international disarmament and non proliferation awareness day every year so this day is observed annually on 5th of march and it was established by united nations general assembly in 2021 the basic aim is to enhance the global understanding of disarmament issues especially among the youth also its objectives include raising awareness about the weapons of mass destruction promoting education on disarmament and encouraging the actions to reduce the threat and foster peace and security so this year the theme is the way forward okay so two things are important when do we observe international disarmament and non proliferation awareness day answer is 5th of march and what is the theme for this year answer is the way forward last question is gevra mine recently seen in the news is located in which indian state so this mine lies in chatisgarh and as of march 2024 it is said to become the largest coal mine in whole asia and this mine is a subsidiary of coal india which is a part of south eastern coal field limited and in march 2024 this mine received environmental clearance so as to increase its production capacity from 52.5 million tons per year to 70 million tons per year also the mine has the first mile connectivity including a conveyor belt silos and a rapid loading system for eco friendly coal evacuation right so gevra mine that was seen in the news lies in the state of chatisgarh so these are the most important current affairs and the news from today and now let's start with today's quiz here on the slide you can see five questions which have been taken from the past 2 3 days current affairs pause the video and try to solve each of these questions and at the end of the lecture do not forget to share your scores in the comment section so please be honest and do not cheat with yourself so that's it for today i hope you have liked the session these were the important news and events from today and we will meet again tomorrow with some more important current affairs till then stay tuned thank you so much for watching and please do not forget to subscribe to gk today with this minus hatsana signing off